Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Emmy and today's video is very exciting. For those that don't know, I am a major Mesmer main. Of the 10,000 hours that I've played, over half of those hours have been on Mesmer. It was the first build that I ever learned for endgame PvE and I'm very excited to announce that after many nerfs, many buffs, many reworks, Heal Chronomancer is back on the menu. This healing build is very different from traditional healers because of two primary reasons. The healing is often delayed due to wells, mantra charging, and shattering clones, and there are a lot of preventative healing sources, where your job is to negate mechanics by blocking damage or preventing stuns. This is especially true without the rifle, which was released in a beta test event this week, but it won't be available permanently for another few months. So for now, I'll be showcasing a build that works on the live servers, and in my opinion, I think it's actually stronger than the rifle. So what can Chrono do? Heal Chronomancer can provide permanent uptime on either quickness or alacrity. The playstyle is identical for both. In addition, it has permanent uptime on might, fury, protection, regeneration, and swiftness. It has access to unique forms of utility, including massive amounts of Aegis and stability. Additionally, it has extremely strong crowd control that can nearly solo break Defiance Bards in raids, fractals, and strike missions. Another great thing about Mesmer is that it is a very flexible class. It can be a little overwhelming to learn the huge amount of weapons, utility skills, and traits, but I'll try to summarize them for you later in this video. To give a few examples, some fights benefit from reflect sources, and you can switch out a utility skill to bring feedback. Other fights might have a lot of adds, and bringing a 600 range pull from focus is super helpful. I'm of the opinion that Chrono is an extremely strong option right now, and it's actually pretty low intensity. You can easily hit 10,000 plus healing per second by just autoing, shattering with three clones, and charging your heal mantra over and over. And then, if you take the time to learn the class, it can genuinely solo carry a lot of situations. Now let's get into the actual build and gameplay. In this video, I'll go over each step of the build in this order. At the end, I'll do a demonstration in the Golem Room. For gear, you'll want to run a very standard healing setup. You should be looking for some mix of Harriers, Minstrels, or Givers. In general, the rule of thumb is full Harriers, armor, weapons, and trinkets if you do not want to tank, full Givers if you want to tank with the highest amount of toughness possible, and full Minstrels if you want to tank and no one else in the squad has toughness. This allows you to have more healing power and vitality. For runes, you'll be running Rune of the Monk. Another option, if you're struggling to keep up boons, you can run Rune of Water for extra boon duration. For sigils, on both open sets, you'll want to run Water and Transference to maximize your healing output. And finally, for the Relic, I would recommend Relic of the Flock, which goes really well with your Mantra spamming. You basically give your party a 3000 health barrier every 10 seconds. For traits, you'll want to run this setup. I won't go over all of the traits in this video, but I want to highlight a few key ones. First is Ego Restoration. You create a clone every time you use a heal skill. This includes all charges of your heal mantra, meaning that you get three clones every 10 seconds. Next is Illusionary Inspiration. Anytime you create a clone, you heal others. And then finally, you have Restorative Illusions. When you shatter, you heal your allies. For every extra clone, the healing is increased. I think you guys can see where I'm going with this. Finally, I want to mention stretch time versus seize the moment. One provides alacrity, the other provides quickness. Again, the play style between both of these is identical, so bring whichever boon your squad is lacking. Now let's talk about the weapons. The main ones you want are scepter and shield and staff. Keep in mind that this build is for the live servers right now. That means that rifle won't be available for another few months, so we're substituting in staff. But to be completely honest, it is way stronger to just stay on scepter and shield forever. This is because Scepter is your best source of clone generation. Every third auto attack will create a clone, which will heal allies due to the traits we just talked about, and this will help you do three clone shatters for all of your F1 through 4. Also, Shield has a lot of block, which is great if you're learning how to tank. Until rifle release, this will be the main weapon set that you camp. I would only ever swap to staff if you need the CC. If you need ad control, I highly recommend swapping on a focus. The second cast of Temporal Curtain will pull everything in a 600 radius, which is amazing for fights with a lot of ads. For utility skills, I would recommend Mantra of Recovery, Mantra of Concentration, Well of Action, Well of Precognition, and Gravity Well. Other common skills to switch in and out are Well of Eternity, Mimic, Mantra of Distraction, Mantra of Resolve, Feedback, and Portal. I want to quickly mention one option that some people enjoy, but personally, I really hate recommending to people, which is Mantra of Pain. 
This is a mantra that does some damage and provides might with no cooldown. So you might be thinking, why not just spam this one over and over again to trigger the mantra healing effect? Well, for starters, it feels like absolute garbage to play. Because you're channeling an attack, anytime you dodge or break the channel, it will go on cooldown. Also, if you're constantly spamming the channel, then you're not summoning any clones. So that means you're not getting any value out of your F1 through 4 shatters, which provide way more boons, utility, and healing overall. By just auto attacking on Scepter, you're getting a clone every 1.5 seconds, which heals for about 1k health, and you're constantly generating clones for 3 clone shatters. The auto attack chain also lasts quite a long time, so even if you need to dodge or use another skill, it won't slow down your clone generation. Now let's talk about the rotation, and seriously, it's super easy. As I mentioned earlier, you can honestly just spam your skills off cooldown and you'll get pretty far, but there's a gentle priority of skill usage that I would recommend. In general, you want to start the fight by using a phantasm skill so you can provide group-wide quickness or alacrity. After that, just keep generating a lot of clones with scepter auto attack and mantra recovery so you can keep shattering with 3 clones each. Then you want to use well of action off cooldown to maintain might, use well of precognition before any blockable attacks, and use mantra of concentration before any knockbacks. Also a quick note on continuum split, I would recommend to open with 3 clones, prioritize your shatters even if you have 0 clones for them, because the base shatter boons are really good, so it's just free real estate. After that, prioritize wells, and then prioritize weapon skills that generate boons or healing. Now I'll do a demonstration on the golem. If you ever want to practice your healing, this is a great way to do it. I like to turn on the arena damage at the extremely threatening level, I would also add alacrity or quickness to your character depending on which trait you have. Finally, it doesn't matter what the golem is, so feel free to use any of the options for the target. Before starting the fight, I would recommend to start in Staff so you have easy access to Phantasms and Chaos Aura. Start with Staff 3 so you immediately provide quickness or alacrity, and then use the rest of the Staff skills, they're all pretty good. Once you've cast a Staff 2, you'll have at least one guaranteed clone, and I would swap to your Scepter and Shield. From this point onwards, just stay on this weapon set unless you need CC from Staff 5. Now let's do Continuum Slit with 3 clones. An easy way to get 3 is to use the clone from Staff 2 and drain the charges from Mantra of Recovery. Once you have 3, open up Continuum Slit and use all of your Shatters, all of your Wells, and whatever else you can fit. Once Continuum Slit closes, you'll notice that everything is off cooldown again. From this point onwards, just keep auto attacking on Scepter to generate clones, and use Mantra of Recovery off cooldown and drain all of the charges every time it comes up. Whenever you reach 3 clones, shatter F1 through 4, prioritizing F1 and F2 for regular boon generation, F3 for CC, and F4 for stability. So ta-da, that's how you play Heal Chrono, and hopefully I've covered everything there is to know about piloting this class. I've played Chrono for so long in so many different ways, so hopefully it's clear how much I adore this class. If you would like to support the channel, please consider liking, subscribing, or commenting to tell me what you think. I'm also an ArenaNet partner, and I stream quite regularly on Twitch, so if you have any questions that you'd like answered, feel free to swing by and say hi. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. I'll see you in the next video.